Hi everybody, Teddy here and you're watching Blade and Simple. If you hear some noise in the background, it's just my water heater, forgive the noise. I'm here to do a review for you on this product. Condor Knife and Tool Final Frontier. Excellent product. We're going to get to that in a second. I'm going to give you a lot of information about that and about the company to help you make a sound decision whether or not this product is right for you and whether or not it fits your budget. Okay. Another thing you're going to see on my reviews are these. Okay. You know what? I know it's not good for you. I know you really shouldn't smoke. Yeah. Okay. Whatever. You know what? If these offend you, then I'm sincerely sorry. You know what? No. I take that back. I'm not sorry. Okay. It's a multi-billion dollar industry. And I'm not that rich. Okay. Don't let all this fancy stuff in my basement fool you. You know, know you might be fooled with my extremely extravagant basement, you know, but believe me, I'm not that rich, okay? And a lot of us cigar people are also knife people as well. So give me a break, all right? Before we get to this, and believe me, this is a knife review, okay? I reiterate, knife review. I'm gonna get asked about this, so let me get to this right away. Let me just get us out of the way and we'll get to the next review. This is the CAO 554 camshaft. It's a Connecticut broadleaf wrapper, Ecuadorian Connecticut binder, Nicaraguan filler. It has um, hints, uh, it has hints of chocolate, cocoa, leather, spice, a little bit of pepper and caramel. It, has Maduro-esque qualities, but it's not a Maduro by any means. I would say this is a medium to full. Not quite a true medium, but not quite a true full cigar. It's somewhere in between, has a bit of body, a lot of flavor. Um, box press, it's five and a half inches by 54 ring gauge. Okay, CAO, flathead, camshaft 554. If you're, in, if you're in Ontario, if you're traveling through Canada, you're traveling in Ontario, look up a place called Casa del Humidor. Check them out. Tell them Teddy sent you. Now, back to the review. Um, first of all, a lot of consumers of knives out there are not, not what you're going to call serious survivalists, okay? although a lot are. You know? Most of us, just your average everyday Joe, weekend warrior, get away on the weekend, do trailing, hiking, camping, whatnot. We like blades, we love blades, okay? So I'm not going from that perspective. I'm not looking from the survivalist perspective, I'm just looking from the everyday average Joe. We're not gonna go into the bush and build a log cabin with a knife like this, okay? It's just not what we do. We just love knives, okay? So I'm gonna give you it from that perspective. Not knocking all the other survivalists out there. Awesome job, just not for us. Now, most of you guys know Condor Knife and Tool as Emma Casa, and you're right, 100%. But what a lot of you might not know is that Condor Knife and Tool actually traces back to Germany. 1877, I believe the company was called the Weisberg Company. Uh, it's in Solingen, Germany. If I mess up the name, forgive me. But start off in Germany. Um, they made swords, military tools, um, knives, agricultural tools, household cutlery, all in the cutlery capital of the world, Solingen, Germany. They got so big where they found a need to really expand to better serve consumers throughout the world. So in 1964, they founded in Macasa, and they built a plant in Santa Ana, El Salvador, filling it with state-of-the-art German equipment, sending over some of their uh, professionals to help train staff, and really started pushing out product. Um, they did machetes, knives, axes, shovels, and various other hand tools. In the 1980s, Imacasa was bought out by a bunch of local investors started focusing on shovels and machetes, operating 24 hours a day, seven days a week to fill the demand for, for their product. 
And in 2004, Imacasa developed its first line of tools for the North American and European market. The Condor Knife and Tool Company was born. This product was designed by a gentleman by the name of Joe Flowers. Now, if you are a serious knife enthusiast, blade enthusiast, just a general knife lover, and you have no idea who Joe Flowers is, you live under a rock, my friend, okay? When you hear the word expert, he's an expert. Um, he teaches outdoor survival skills. He teaches fitness, martial arts. He has a degree in zoology, a minor in entomology. He's a naturalist, hunter, fisherman, herpetologist, videographer, knife thrower, guide. Dude is even a bookkeeper, all right? He spends a lot of time in the rainforests and a lot of time in the deserts of Utah honing his craft and testing product. So when you hear the word expert, Joe Flowers is an expert. This is his design. Let's take a look at it. Now, bit of specs on this blade. It is a 1075 carbon steel. Give away carbon steel, black coating. All right, guys, when you see black coating, carbon steel means you have to oil and take care of your blades. All right. It has a blade length of four and a half inches, overall length of nine and five eighths inch, three millimeter thickness. I'm not going to do the conversion. If you got Google, you can look it up. Micarta handle scales, nice pommel on the end, bow drill divot, through hole pins, jimping on the spine, clip point design, um, Scandi grind, and it weighs 9.92 ounces. Not a very heavy blade, very comfortable. Comes with a leather sheath. We'll get into this in a second. Now, one of the first thing you're gonna notice when you get this blade in your hands is how comfortable it is. This is an extremely comfortable blade. Very comfortable, this is why. You have a very, very nice palm swell tapered towards the end of the of the scales beautiful belly to this blade not overly pronounced the front and rear kilons finger grooves match up perfectly which makes this handle very comfortable in your hands when you have this in your hand your fingers here don't feel like they're floating which makes this awesome for long use prolonged use you will not get hand fatigue um, there are zero hot spots on this. You can really grip down on this tight, and believe me, I am. There are no hot spots in this handle whatsoever. This taper is beautiful. If you're if you're a hunter, you're doing any kind of skinning, you can lay your thumb flat, and the ridge of this scale does not dig into your thumb, which is awesome. Beautifully designed. If you're into doing chest cuts, you can easily lay your thumb flat and do chest cuts for a, a, long, uh, a long period of time, pardon me, without getting hand fatigue. Um, just, it's not what I do, I'm not into chest cuts, but that's just me. Now these through hole pins, you could attach a rear lanyard or a forward lanyard if you so choose. It's just, I don't. This is not a chopper. I am not going to chop with this blade. It's only a four and a half inch blade. It's not a chopper. You could do some, I guess you could do some light chopping if you chose to, but this is not a chopper. Also, these through hole pins, if you so desired, you could lash it to a stick and create a spear. I would not, and, I, and I'll tell you why. If this is your sole means of survival, whatever it may be, and you're in a situation where you find it necessary to lash this to a stick and create a spear. You need that reach, wild animals, whatever it may be. And for any reason that spear were to break, you lose your sole means of survival. Okay, it's, I'd rather just, I'd much rather just sharpen a stick and create a spear that way, as opposed to have running the risk of losing my tool. So I won't do it. Can you do it? Yes, you can. This rear pommel here is also great for pounding in tent pegs, whatever you might need it for. Does a phenomenal, phenomenal job. So 
Love that design. The blade, clip point design. Little bit of jimping on the spine, as you can see. Not, not overly pronounced. It's not very rough on the hands. Um, I am not a fan of jimping, okay? Because some people might argue that jimping implies tactical. This is not a tactical blade, okay? And even if it were, you still don't need the jimping. The design of this front keylon or groove locks your hands in. The palm swell and the belly of this handle locks you in. You can thrust, you can do a rear thrust, you can slash, and you're not going anywhere because your hands are locked in. This jimping, in my opinion, is completely unnecessary. Okay, it I don't see a point for it. I don't I don't see a purpose for it. I don't like it. It's just my preference. Some of you love it. Just for me, I don't see a purpose for it on this knife. It just doesn't make any sense to me. It does not have a 90 degree spine, which I would much prefer. Listen, get rid of the jimping. Give me a straight spine with a 90 degree edge, okay? There's a lot of uses for a 90 degree edge on your blade, not just striking a ferro rod, a ferro seam rod, it, there's a lot of other uses. I mean, one, yes, you could strike a ferro seam rod, which gives you another option for for uh, for fire making, which is phenomenal. Um, another thing, scraping. If you're making, uh, say, a spoon, you can use the spine, you can scrape out the handle, nice, comfortable, smooth handle. Um, also, you can scrape wood, get some really fine tinder. If you're camping somewhere or hiking somewhere where there's a lot of cedar, you can take the back of the blade, scrape the tree, and create some nice fine fluff. Take a spark like that. There's a lot of uses for it. So knife companies out there, please, I'm not the only one asking, give us a nine degree spine, all right? It is a Scandi grind or modified Scandi grind. It did come with a secondary bevel. I took away that secondary bevel and created a true Scandi grind with this. This is the Work Sharp Field Sharpener. Okay, guys, listen. It's inexpensive. It weighs next to nothing. And it will get your knife back to a razor edge. You have two diamond plates, ceramic rod, and a leather strop. It does the job every single time. Read the instructions. Guarantee you'll find a lot of uses for this. I know a lot of guys out there, well, we don't like reading instructions. And I know our women tell us all the time, read the instructions. We choose not to. This, guys, just read the instructions, okay? Read the instructions. You're going to love this. Throw it in your pack. You're not even going to notice it's there. You're done with your knife. Throw it on this. You're good to go, okay? So it is... Scandi grind, and it's a very, very comfortable blade. What I love about a Scandi grind is it gives you a very fine edge. It comes to an extremely fine point, which is great for cutting, um, food prep, whittling wood, whatever you need it to do, this blade will do it. And being 1075 steel, it will hold a phenomenal edge. Um, the difference between this and the 1095, in my opinion, is 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 negligible okay it is negligible there's a slight difference but it's not a major difference another great thing about this if you're into it is this bow drill divot if you're into primitive fire making techniques this stuff is great so I, i'm just not just not my thing okay but all the guys out there that do love it all the power to you all right so there are a lot of this knife gives you a lot a lot of options, which for a knife, I absolutely, absolutely love. I love a knife that gives you options. Now, you can baton with this, but you're not gonna process a lot of wood, a lot of big pieces of wood. This is just not what it's designed for. It's a bushcraft style blade. Okay, you're gonna do a lot of fine work. 
um, you're going to do some, maybe some little detail work or bushcrafting or um, kindling, feather stick making. That's what this is designed for and that is where it thrives. Like I said, if you're a hunter, you can lay your thumb flat on here. You can lay your thumb flat, you can do your skinning. Or you can really pinch up on this blade. There's a lot of width to this blade, which I love. It gives you the option to pinch up really comfortably and do some fine detail work. You can really get in there and do some detail work. If you're into primitive fire making techniques, I know I might be getting this terminology wrong, but I believe it's a hearth board. This nice tip here, really get in there and create your start hole so you can do your burn in. Great design. I would much prefer this in a drop point design. It would give me more belly to the blade and give me substantially more material up here where if I chose to do batoning or you know processing some wood I have a little bit more meat in the tip where I can really um, use my baton on but overall very nice design extremely comfortable and as you can see there's a lot of room on this blade I wear extra large size gloves and this blade this knife fits in my hand perfectly now there's a lot of talking let's see what this knife can do okay um, Let's say you wanted to do, let's say you want to do a little, little feather sticking. Yeah, you know, just, I'm just, I'm just, just messing with you. Okay. I have a piece of wood here. Okay. This has been in my basement. It is really dried out. So let's see what it can do. As you can see, it's I'm not really having any issues going through this, mainly because of the scandy grind forces that wood apart. So I'm not, so I'm not feeling any sticking. I'm not feeling any sticking on the blade. The blade is not sticking in the material. It's not flatting against me. It's really, honestly, it's flying through there. And this is super hard. This wood is super hard, so the wood is, it, like I said, super hard wood and not having any issues processing that. This is what you're mainly going to use this for, kindling. does a phenomenal job there's no rolling there's no chipping there's no let me check there's no micro chipping along the edge still really really sharp really sharp let's see how this thing does it feather sticking now a great trick for you guys out there who might be new to feather sticking what you want to do is lay this edge here flat against your material like this and slightly tilt you want to ride this edge you want to just ride this edge slightly to avoid digging in to your to your wood now let's see what this thing can do now I'm not gonna try and impress you with my feather sticking technique or anything along those lines I just want to give you an idea of what this blade can do now in terms of feather sticking, because of this scandy grind, this thing cuts beautifully, beautifully. No effort, not pushing hard. I'm just right in the edge of that blade. And as you can see, I mean, it does a fantastic job. If you're into chest pulls, like I said, because it is tapered scale, you can really lay your thumb flat. Now, do I like chest pulls? No, I'm just not a fan of chest pull. But you can do it very comfortably, very easily. I mean, it's not difficult. It's fairly easy to do. Wood going everywhere. Whatever. It's very easy to do. I mean, no issues with this blade. And it's still extremely, extremely sharp. Edge retention on this blade, I think it's phenomenal. It is a phenomenal, phenomenal 
edge, great heat treat, so it holds an edge fantastically. Now, the only downside, in my opinion, I find to this particular knife is this jimping. I'm not a fan of it, I just don't see a point for it, okay? I would much rather a 90 degree spine and give us, give us a flat edge, take away this jimping, I just don't see it as being necessary. Get rid of the jimping, 90 degree spine, give us more options, right? Scraping, ferrocium rod, comes in handy. Another thing I would love to see, I would love to see this in a clip point design. Otherwise, it's beautiful. The Ricasso here, especially when you're doing detail work, because the Ricasso here is so short, you don't feel the need to get right up on a blade and choke up. You don't feel that need. This Keylon here really gets your hand close enough to where you feel comfortable doing some fine detail work and really getting in there without feeling the need to run your finger right up on the blade, okay? So in terms of design, handle, the comfort of the handle, design of this handle, five out of five, all day long. This is a beautifully designed handle. Probably one of the more comfortable handles I've, I've held. And I have much more expensive blades that this handle beats them out. So handle design, five out of five. The quality of the steel, the heat treat and quality of the steel, I will give it a four and a half out of five. I would much prefer 1075, uh, 1095, sorry, or some other kind of steel, maybe a D2 steel. D reason why I say D2 steel is because D2 steel is still carbon steel, but is less corrosive than a 1095, 1075, or those other steels. It will not corrode as at fast a rate as this would. But you keep it dry, you keep it oiled, you never have an issue. Let's take a look at the sheath. Now the sheath is, it is a leather sheath. Very nice, durable leather sheath. Give me one sec. If you're a cigar person, gotta check this out. The CAO 554 flathead camshaft. Gotta give that a try. Now, here's the sheath it comes with. Nice leather sheath. Thick, durable, nice quality, great stitching. Beautiful stitching. Nice embossed logo on the front. Very nice design sheath. It has a, this will accommodate a two inch belt. For you military guys who carry big belts, it'll work. Most of us, I don't have a pants that fits a two inch belt, okay? So it really doesn't matter to me. Um, not knocking you military guys, okay? Thank you for fighting for our freedom, but just, I don't carry a two inch belt. Retention, really good, really nice retention. You can wet form this. I just choose not to, okay? It's, it, it's carbon steel and there are ways to do it. I just personally choose not to. Fits nicely, but here's where this sheath, this sheath falls short for me. If you're using this sheath and you put this on your belt, you're gonna notice that pommel will knock into your side. You're gonna feel it, okay? Another thing, I would love to see this sheath ride a little bit higher. It would help with the friction fit, better retention. Also, a leather sheath like this screens for a dangler. Okay, so Condor, nice design, but please give us a dangler. This needs a dangler. Being this kind of blade, this style blade, it needs a dangler. It rides way too high. It is comfortable, but it just rides too high. Um, my solution was I took a bit of power cord, tied it around, and now I have my dangler. So the sheath itself, I give it a four out of five. It is thick, it is durable, it needs a drainage hole, which it does not have. Okay, please include a drainage hole here. This belt loop is a little too low. It needs a dangler. Okay, dangler will help this thing ride low and will not knock you in the side. And 
this leather sheath needs to be a little bit deeper. I want to see this sheath come up a bit higher. You can grab onto the rear kilon and easily draw this knife out. So the sheath itself, I want to see it draw a little bit higher. Uh, the sheath itself, I want to see it come up a little bit higher. And please include a dangler. So as a general package, what would I rate this blade? I'd have to give it, in my opinion, a four out of five. What makes this so much better and why it ranks a four out of five in my opinion is the price. In the US where you guys are, you're looking at, I say 50 to $65, depending on where you go. Um, you can find it on Amazon, um, Blade HQ, Knife Center, wherever you guys go to check out, wherever you guys go to search for your knives, I'm sure you can find this. That's a phenomenal value, especially now, come on really don't have much money to throw around then. It's nice to find a product that's inexpensive and does what it's designed to do, okay? You get a nice quality sheath and you get a beautiful blade. And I'm gonna hear, well, you, you buy a knife, you, you don't buy a sheath. No, I buy a package, all right? When I buy a knife, I buy it as a package. Upgrading my sheath should be an option, not a necessity, okay? If that's the case, the knife companies out there, stop giving us a sheath, sell us a blade at a discounted price, and offer a sheath as an option. That way you keep the money in your pocket. But when you buy a knife, you buy a package. I'm tired of these higher-end knife companies putting out beautiful blades, awesome blades, and crappy sheaths. You spend $100 plus dollars on a knife, and then you have to in turn spend another $60 to $80 to get a custom sheath. It should not be a necessity. It's an option. It's like buying a car, and then after you purchase a car, well, you know, wheels and, wheels and rims are, are extra. You know, I just bought the car. Yeah, well, technically you have a car. You just don't have any wheels, but that's an extra charge. You, you, you can get that somewhere else. It makes no sense. Okay, so Condor, thank you for a good quality sheath. Awesome job. So guys, it's four, it's four out of five in my book. Will I recommend it? Yes, any day. If you live in Ontario, Canada, where I am, you're looking at about 100 bucks, which for the value for your money, phenomenal value. Um, if you're looking for something like this, you live in Ontario, Canada, check out a place called srknives.com. Sure, you can find it there, great selection. Check them out. But Condor Knife and Tool, great product. And if you guys out there, Condor Knife and Tool, you got a problem with this, you contact them, they'll make it right. They stand by their product and they make a phenomenal, phenomenal product. So definitely one of those knives you're gonna wanna get your hands on and get out there, chop some stuff, cut some stuff, make use of it. Beautiful blade. So in closing, that's my review. I'll be back with some more review for you guys, remember, Hit the subscribe button. Let me know what you think. And for you guys out there, cigar guys out there, give us a shot. I know you're going to love it. Till next time, I'm Teddy, and this is Bladed Simple.